So we're here today at the ID Tech X show in Santa Clara, California, and I'm here with Professor Greg White, OBE, uh, one of our cornerstone speakers from the event today. Uh, so Greg, what were you telling us? Can you give us like a quick highlight of the main messages from your cornerstone this morning? Well, I mean, I was focused on a whole host of different areas around mm -hmm. human performance and also around human health. Um, and actually talking about the role of technology uh, in enhancing that. Mm -hmm. And I think as, as much, I th the sort of primary focus that I was talking about was actually about the role of technology in changing behavior mm -hmm. and actually how difficult that is to achieve. Um, but actually for me, what I see that the future of, of technology mm -hmm. within that sector mm -hmm. is actually around not, not just functioning and we expect it to function well but I think the outcome has got to be around behavior change and changing people's attitudes and moving them forward and, and in health and performance they're incredibly important areas yeah sure so it's so really focusing on the person at the end of it so yeah a lot of the as you'll see walking around a lot of the exhibitors and customers we have here at the ID Tech X show throughout the whole value chain so it might be producing a material for a sensor or an IC that goes into one of these wearable devices I mean and sort of how, how can that message around the the person at the end of it the the action trickle down this value chain to be relevant right down to the material level do you think? yeah I mean you're right it's really interesting yeah. walking around uh, walking around here at the exhibition it's incredible I think the one thing that you sort of that it reminds you of is the fact that there's a huge number of people mm -hmm. in this chain that, that ends up producing a product that we see on the shelves. For sure. um, and, and I think for me, what, what we have to do is drive into that production process, right from the, the you know the chemical engineering all the way through to the manufacture sure. of it, is keep driving in the fact that, that it should be delivering delivering to the customer at the end of the day. I think I think it's very it's very yeah. easy to get sort of entrenched in the fact it's about the quality of the product. Mm -hmm. But for me, actually, what it should be doing is it, it, should, be, it should be producing outcome. And the outcome is for the end user. And, and I think if, if you can embed that along the whole mm. production chain, I think you get a much better product at the end of it. Yeah, sure. It's one of the things that, I mean, we hear about in the wearable conferences <coughs> and, and sensor conferences, talking about actionable data or some kind of, yes, you can measure this, but what does that mean? Absolutely and, right. and how can you combine yeah. that with other systems? And yeah. so what we see a lot of around this show and others is, is very interesting sensors at the hardware level, <laughs> yeah. looking for people to kind of integrate it and go further. Yeah. And one, one interesting message I think for them would be from someone such as yourself working with uh, professional athletes, celebrities, and so on, as, yeah. as you mentioned, um, you mentioned in your presentation this morning, there are some areas that you would love to do better or yeah. some, some metrics. Is there anything like that? Because this is the message that we can really share with our community as to, right, what sensor do I need yeah. that, that can help you out in what you're doing? Yeah. I, mean, I, I think the interesting thing is that, that, that you pinpoint the issue, I think, and that is that it's actually providing solutions to answers that exist mm -hmm. rather than creating a solution and then trying to manufacture a question off the back, sure. off the back of yeah, that. Of course. Uh, and, and so answering questions that exist. And I think actually what it is also is about doing, it's doing the simple things well. Mm -hmm. I think what, what, we, what we are very good at is making things very complex. And I think simplicity is the driver. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and often a lot of that is that data is incredibly valuable. Data is really valuable to me, but it's the interpretation of the data that matters. So uh, what, what I, I expect a product to be able to measure what I want it to measure. I expect it to function well, for it to be reliable. Um, but at the end of the day, it's actually what I do with that data that makes the difference. Um, and I think if you're giving people tech to create a change in behavior, then what you have to do in order to, to make that a reality is make sure that, that the information that you give them is usable. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think cool. what, what I see now with wearables, I mean, I, I remember in the early days in, in the late 80s and 90s where we were using wearable tech, heart rate monitors, for example. You know, we've now added GPS on top of that. We've added heart rate variability and all these complex layers on top sure. of it to the point now where the consumer looks at it and thinks, I have no idea what it means mm -hmm. because, because, it, because it's too complex. So I think you know, the message I would send is actually think about the end user who is not in, embedded or well educated in, that, in your area mm. and you've got to think about what is going to work for them and I think the key to that is simplicity. So when you're working in these high performance labs, I remember you, you showed the image of Anthony Joshua and yep. using all these, these different respiration and, and tidal volume and all these kind of yep. sensors you showed working with various others. Um, are you typically, when you're deploying those platforms, what do you do in your process? Just to give a bit of an insight to the people watching about, so how are you sourcing this technology? Do you need one supplier that does the whole thing for you? Can you use multiple different pieces of kit? Uh, how, how does it work from your point of view when you want to deploy a certain, a certain yeah. solution for a certain customer? It's an interesting one. Because I, I guess 
because I'm an old man. <laughs> I've done all sorts. So, right. so you know, I mean, actually, if, even if you come to my lab now, we have got Heath Robinson pieces of kit on, on the bench mm -hmm. because what we've done. So, for example, in pulmonary function, one, one of our specialist areas is exercise induced asthma, sure. which requires a specific test called eucapnic voluntary hyperventilation. So you get, you get the, the, the client to hyperventilate uh, very, very rapidly. And, and in order for them not to faint, you have to feed them carbon dioxide at a higher concentration, 5% okay. CO2. Yeah. Um, it's a test that, that the IOC currently require for the use of asthma medication, and yet nobody makes that piece of kit. Right. So what okay. we had to do is we had to design it and, and create it ourselves. And when you look at it, it looks like it's been made up because right. it has been made yeah, up. Sure. So you've got that end of the spectrum all the way through to, you know, for example, that what I showed with Anthony Joshua was mm -hmm. an integrated cardiopulmonary stress testing card, mm -hmm. which, which is, you know, which has evolved over the past sort of three decades. Uh, and is incredibly complex and sophisticated to deliver what we're looking for. So, sure. so to some extent, what, 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 I, what we do is that we, we, we operate at both ends of that spectrum is that we were sort of designing for mm -hmm. purpose, sure. a very specific purpose, but then also using off the shelf. Mm -hmm. um, but again, actually, you know, the, the thing for me is it, it's like, oh, I'm the same as a, as, a, as a normal end user, is that what I like is I like simplicity. So I need a platform that I can use mm -hmm. and I can use rapidly. I don't want to have to spend a year learning how to use it. Sure. Uh, and equally, if I can go to a single supplier who can provide a one-stop shop for me, mm -hmm. then that actually makes my life a lot easier. It makes that, that product a lot more attractive. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the most important thing that I've learned in the past three decades is actually support. Um, mm -hmm. Is I think it's something that a lot of a lot of a lot of people that I've interface with within the tech industry do very badly. Sure. And I think the companies that do it very well are the ones that, that overall do very well mm -hmm. because they provide the support that's, that, that, that's required for me to make sure that, that the equipment remains contemporary mm -hmm. and also provides what I'm looking for from it. Sure, absolutely. And I guess that applies right down to the sort of, uh, I guess, when you're working with these individuals <coughs> who may not be ac have access to your lab and all this equipment, yeah. but right down to what they're doing sort of a day-to-day -day program or something which requires a put more a more sort of consumer wearable you could say I yep. guess the same thing would apply absolutely right yeah. no no absolutely right I think okay. I think that, that's absolutely right and, and it is uh, you know what's what's changed in my time in, in this game mm. is the fact that actually we've moved to wearables you know what used to take I mean that, that metabolic cart that I showed you sure that used to take up an entire lab mm -hmm. and now it's you know the size of a desktop computer yeah um, I think what the, the sort of biosensors that we now have that you can now wear on your wrist would take literally a lab full of equipment to do. Sure. So what we've done is we've miniaturized it beautifully mm -hmm. to make it accessible, to make it wearable. Um, but but the, you know, the, the same premise still exists and that is that it's not just about the equipment, it's about what you do with the data that equipment collects. Sure. And that has Absolutely. to be usable and interpretable. Great. Well, thank you very much, Greg, for, for taking the time of this interview. Thank you for, for joining us here at ID TechX. I could certainly talk to you for hours about this subject <laughs> for sure, but I'm conscious of time. Well, no, thanks uh, for having me. So it's, it's been it's, brilliant. It's a real pleasure, and thank you very much for being with us. Thank you.